So with the Sunkwa Peak coming out, we've obviously seen in the trailer that one of the upcoming bosses, a very cool looking fire boss, is a cool looking stalker beast that many people took as totally new when they were watching the trailer. Little did they realise, it was actually something that had been implemented with Path of Fire. It was just super rare and people didn't really know about it. And the devs are on the record as having said, look, they're going to think of doing that stuff more going forwards so that they can produce new experiences, reusing old enemies and old stuff that you probably just haven't seen because it's so obscure. Now I think that's brilliant. As a fan of chronicling the obscure weird stuff in the game, I'm really excited to see what ArenaNet goes for. They've got so much opportunity. And well, reading about that sent me down some rabbit holes recently. Earlier in the year I actually did the same thing. I went to the wiki and looked at a ton of unimplemented content. Stuff that ArenaNet made but then never finalized putting in the game. So that's what I want to show you guys today. Some of Guild Wars 2's graveyard, the lost assets over time, and we'll see what some of you guys think of it. Now, if you're a really long-term fan like me, you might recognize some of these as we go forwards, but hopefully I've got a few surprises in there for you. Starting off with something that I wish I'd talked more about on YouTube over the however many years we've been covering Guild Wars 2 now. And that's a whole new weapon type that the devs were making, many of which were implemented, but are not really usable. So what do I mean by this? Well, we've got swords, we've got axes, daggers, bows, and so on. Way back in 2010, the devs did confirm what the full selection was going to be. But they also said in an interview there was going to be another one, and that's pole arms. Yeah, so pole arms are a little bit similar to spears, I guess. And in fact, we can see that a lot of the pole arms arena that we're going to implement just became spears in the end. But you can still see some of them in game, even though they're not acquirable. So here I'll throw out some chat codes. These uh, actually came from an Inga al album from 2018. So uh, many thanks to the anonymous person who set this up. But basically, and I've compiled them, if we mouse over one of these chat codes, and we'll be able to do this with most of this stuff, you'll see we have a weapon here, uh, and it does belong to an existing weapon set in the game. But when we wield it, it doesn't wield like a regular spear. It wields it. We're almost like riding a broomstick. <laughs> really, like we're a witch, I suppose. And it's a bit awkward, I guess, the way it's clipping between our legs. This stuff wasn't fully finalized. But uh, what is this? If we actually mouse over, you'll see it's a work in progress item with no name. It's been a usable chat code for years now, which is incredible, frankly, because most super old chat codes ended up breaking. But you'll see that it's not listed as a sword or as a spear is listed as a polearm and it's unusable by our profession so this was a very real thing here i'll show you guys another one many of these are super work in progress here's another one this seems to be the hecate polearm and you can't quite tell on the ui here because of the exclamation mark on the bottom right of the box but that says hecate and then in the bottom po or pa maybe which is you know their shorthand for polearm who knows how old this is and what what artist was originally making this work in progress placeholder uh ui art so one of the big questions on my mind I don't ever see people speculating about is which professions we're going to get these. Like I think probably the warrior, maybe the engineer, maybe the ranger. I'm not sure who else though. Here we see the engineer icon. This icon used to show up all the time in the alphas and betas and stuff. I, even in the Heart of Thorns beta I remember seeing this guy a few times. He basically means there's no icon art that's been hooked up. But again this, is, this one you can clearly see is actually a part of the beaded set that you could craft in Sparkfly uh, Swamp. Sparkfly Swamp, that is the Guild Wars 2 version of the map, right? That's not the Guild Wars 1 one. Uh, and then over here, we've actually got a weird one. So this is the God Skull Harpoon Gun. But uh, I think it was actually meant to be a pole arm. Well, this was in the album, at least. Maybe this is just a harpoon gun that we never get to fire in the end. Uh, next, you've got this one, which is weird. It's actually listed as a dagger. And we wield it as a dagger. I wonder if at one day, Arena Net were testing with different configurations for holding these. Uh, we got a Hecate one here. Oh, this says Hecate. This one is actually... The Asura set from launch. You could make these in the Mystic Forge. But they actually did this as a hammer. So I believe this actually got released as a staff. And here's a work in progress staff version of it. But they did kind of a hammer version too. So anyway, they all kind of feel like pole arms. They're all probably reused. And in fact, there are various concept art pieces. I'll throw these on screen. From way before Guild Wars 2 even came out. That clearly show pole arms as a part of their sets. So in the original Gamescom, the devs hosted this big Q&A interview thing in which one of the uh, lead game designers, a guy called Eric Flanham, who hasn't been at ArenaNet for years and years and years now, he kind of went really quiet and mysterious in the background after Guild Wars 2 came out. I'm pretty sure it's because he was working on another game that the devs never announced and then eventually ended up leaving. 
But he was very big before Guild Wars 2 came out and had a big influence on this game. And so anyway, there's a Q&A between him and the audience. And uh, there's a video of it. I'll just transcribe it and read it to you, though, uh, as they've got it written out in the interview. So the question is, the community has seen concept art and they've seen some things of pole arms, but they don't pop up in the official list of weapons we've mentioned so far. So will there be pole arms? Will they come later? Or, and Eric said... So really early on, we did have pole arms included in the game, and we actually did all of our concept art for our weapons and included pole arms in the sets, which I think a lot of people caught up on. Pole arms unfortunately didn't make it into the final cut of the game, and so we won't have them on release, but you never know, they might make an appearance later on. Now, some of you guys might be getting a bit excited in this video at that last sentence. That seems, if you actually watch the video, he mentions it very offhandedly. And, you know, he's not influencing the studio anymore. And it's been years and years and years and years and years. So that does not mean that Arena have any plans for pole arms right now. But it is an interesting side of the game that they were working on and never actually ended up being developed. Moving on, there are some other weird skins from the recent expansions either, uh, e even, going forward from Season 2. So we obviously have uh, Belinda's Greatsword. Now, this is what really got me thinking about this video. So right here... This is a great sword that has no name and so on, but it does actually exist in the client. This is what Marjorie ends up wielding, wielding I guess. It's Belinda's spirit within it. Uh, and for a long time, people were wondering if we were actually going to be able to wield this for ourselves. I do admit it looks pretty cool. Uh, maybe we'll see something of it in the future. The Sunqua Peak video I did, I talked about this sword, and then I think I ended up cutting that whole section out of the video because it wasn't this in the end at all. But when I saw the character in the, in the new fractal, I thought they were building these, which would kind of make sense with the whole weird whispers thing, right? That would be interesting. Anyway, what was actually going on in the trailer is the character was wielding some of these weapons here, which are actually listed as Quetzal weapons. So this is a Quetzal dagger or Quetzal, and then this one's a sword as well, uh, which again, the player base hasn't been able to use. This character is now using those, so maybe we'll find them. They're just at different scales. I had a comment from one of you saying, oh, that WP is actually a Tanto. And I mean, yeah, technically you might consider these to be Tantos, but as far as Guild Wars 2's weapon architecture is concerned, swords and daggers, and that's specifically what they've got here. So maybe we'll see these. Why they're the Quetzal staff and whether the Tengu actually have an influence in the Fractal remains to be seen. But the Quetzal, Tengu weren't even around Kantha, they were way up north, so I, I, I don't really expect that that means very much. A weird thing from Path of Fire is a bunch of stuff from Chirai Osa's arsenal. Now, maybe these only exist in the game so that Chirai himself can wield them in some way? But check it out, so this is Chirai's shield, okay, looks pretty good. And as far as I know, again, this is available, you, you could get this in theory. I think people had some ideas that it might be in the Mystic Forge, but people don't know the recipe, and that kind of stuff has happened in Guild Wars in the past. And there's actually a ghostly version of it as well. So I don't know whether they'll open these up to the player base one day, or whether they are just for the NPC. An equivalent story is going on with his sword as well. By the way, his great sword is bloody huge, and very shiny. They don't do shiny stuff too well in Guild Wars often, but this, this one's certainly pretty shiny. And then finally you get a ghostly version of it as well at the same time. I mean, I'm kind of over the whole ghostly translucent weapon things, especially with how glowy and shiny everything else is in the game. I mean, Christ, look at my character right now. So, hey. Uh, next, there is something... There's like three things from Heart of Thorns. Heart of Thorns is a funny one. Do you remember that during the Heart of Thorns betas, if you played as a Revenant, you got a full set of Revenant weapons? They look really cool. They had very special skins. Those went missing for years because the devs forgot to implement them. And then during the Path of Fire era, they finally got re-implemented. There's now like a special NPC that moves around the world throughout the week. You can go to them, buy those skins, and you can get them. So there's more stuff like that from Heart of Thorns, though, that still hasn't been done. Uh, and first of them is this item, which has kind of been done. It's called the Fargate Opener. So again, I think this was visible in early HOT stuff. And so this is what it looks like. It's a, a red blade. Now, some of you guys might recognize this because the truth is it's actually just like the warp blade, which they later did with Path of Fire. So here, I'll just get Bolt here for a second. We go the, the wardrobe. And if I go warp blade uh, for the... Oh, weird. I've got a weird bug here. I didn't realize this. But if I'm not the correct spec, it won't actually allow me to transmute the spec-specific weapon. That's kind of funny. So here we go. Uh, so Warp Blade um, is this sword. I mean, Christ, how do I actually... 
preview this for you. I guess we'll just do it this way and I'll, I'll wield it. Okay, so here's the warp blade. Now this is the Weaver's Elite Specialization weapon. And you'll notice that it's basically the Fargate opener, just in blue. Which is especially interesting always when this happens. Guild Wars 1 fans will remember the old dying system. You could actually die weapons. And what we essentially have here is a blue die scheme and a red die scheme. When they did the Ascended Weapon set, they kind of had different dies and slight model tweaks. But there you have it. So, very, very, very similar. You'll also notice that the gem on the inside of the Fargate opener is red. While the gem on the inside of this one, the Warp Blade, is actually yellow. I guess they tried to get multiple elements going on this, while this one has a more consistent look about it. But yeah, this never got implemented. It's, it's not actually wieldable. Wow, I managed to get rid of the exclamation mark there. That was a bit strange. So, yeah, that's one thing. Another thing from Heart of Thorns is the Hylic Bullfrog Hammer. So we can check this out here. Big meaty thing. As far as I know, there's no way to actually acquire it. It seems fully implemented as far as the mouse over stuff. Um, but you just can't use it. Obviously, I think this is what the, the new hawk run around wielding in the X-Pack. And maybe that's enough as far as the devs are concerned. And then uh, probably the coolest one. This is the Mordrum Great Axe. Okay, so mouse over, you don't get any tooltip text. But this is obviously what one of the champions of Mordrum Orth uses. Is champion the right word? You know, the big kind of creatures that you end up fighting, particularly as Dragon Stand goes along and harangue you. Well, it's actually two-handed, so it's an enormous axe that you're wielding a bit like a great sword. This isn't the only time we've seen great axes. There's also the Executioner's Axe that came with an early Halloween update. But great axes are not a formal weapon set in the game as of now, so um, you kind of got to look at stuff like this. So whether this will ever actually be implemented or used for something, I don't know. But I still think he looks really, really, really badass. Let's shift gears now to something I think is even more interesting, perhaps. And that's the gem store. So the gem store has also had stuff over the years that was able to be mined. Like you can mine like this art that's scrolling here. This appears in the client a little bit before the stuff actually goes on sale. And it kind of gives you a hint as to what they might be thinking of. Now way back during season one, we actually had two very cool like sets of items that the devs for one reason or another decided they didn't want to sell. And so even though all the implementation work was done, and could be previewed in game, uh, they never ended up becoming a thing. So, I guess first I'll talk about the school uniform. So this is an interesting one. We actually have to go to Wiki to look at this because the in-game codes broke. There's quite a few codes that broke now. This is one of them. But so I think particularly because these were going to be town clothes. So town clothes was an old system whereby you could hot swap your armor into another appearance that had no stats, so it wouldn't be good for combat. It was a vanilla system, and obviously that's a bit unnecessary in a world with equipment templates and even hell, just regular transmutation. So town clothes as a system have gone, but you used to be able to equip five pieces of town clothes. Headpiece, shoulders, uh, sorry, everything except shoulders. For some reason they didn't do a shoulder piece for the town clothes. And the idea was Arena Net would sometimes sell town, town clothes, and role players and stuff could use them quite well. A proposed type of town clothes was this the school uniforms. So there was the coat, the leggings, and the boots. Thankfully, Wiki has managed to document, and many thanks to the guys that have been running this all this time, uh, have managed to document some of the appearances here. I actually remember when this was originally being mined and stuff, I think people were talking about different dyes and stuff, because you really could play a lot with the previews. Um, and the devs ended up not going with it. So I'm really curious about what everyone's response on my YouTube video in 2020 about this is. Because back in the day, I do remember a lot of people felt it was justified that the school uniforms fully implemented and you know these armor sets weren't added. People were happy that they weren't added because they felt that it tampered with the aesthetic of Guild Wars 2 too much. I guess we were still at a period for the game where people felt that you know what this game was meant to look like was supposed to be re very refined and so on. And I guess the devs felt the same way too. They didn't want people running around in these kind of almost like skimpy sometimes looking uh, school outfits. And they cut the whole thing. I wonder though in 2020 coming back in game. I mean look at this character I'm playing right now. I don't put much thought into my fashion wars. And I certainly haven't prepared for this video let me tell you. You know I've got these crazy fairy wings. We know the nuts gliders and infusions and ridiculous stuff that's in the game now it's it's mental the kind of things that you can look like so and that includes some of the outfits so is that really so out of place now the school uniforms i wonder what you guys think you know i even think about just stuff like running around wearing glasses and stuff feels like it's broken away from the guild wars aesthetic in all the same ways that those uniforms would have 
I guess there's a law consideration, maybe, but they've always been a bit flippant. I don't know whether I should really make an argument here that just because something bad is happening, that allows them to double down on the bad thing. You know, the, an argument of futility, basically, so just go for it. I don't know whether that's always the right answer. I think that's an easy cop-out a lot of the time. But in this case, I'm not very, I'm not as offended by the, sc the school outfits. In fact, I don't even consider that as a, as a thing to worry about anymore as some of the other stuff. So, we'll see what you guys think, but the uh, the codes don't even work in-game anymore, so they feel a bit more diff distant. Next on the gem store, another thing along the same lines. Now, these are ridiculous. Uh, and so, think about, maybe pause the video, get your answer in about the, <laughs> the school uniforms. Now get ready to edit that answer, because how do you feel about these? Now, these codes do still work. The paper bag helms. So, they were once upon a time going to sell a four-pack of these, as you can see. For however much. Or you could buy them individually. Maybe you could roll for them. I don't know. And uh, this is what these look like. Now, now, I'm very compelled by these. Because as you can see on the bottom left of the screen right now, when I mouse over, it says skin locked there. Like, this won't appear in my wardrobe, but you guys have to understand that there's loads of hidden skins in the wardrobe. Like, I don't have the World vs. World Legendary backpack, but those skins are there and they'll unlock if I go through the process to get them. It's the same with the paper bags. They are technically there. It's just no one's unlocked them. Like, these are in-game, guys. And it knows that my account doesn't have them unlocked. I love the idea that a dev could just unlock it for themselves and run around wearing these. So, here's what they are. First, <laughs> we have... Okay, and it doesn't have an icon, all right? But we have the paper bag with the blush skin. Okay, so we're blushing a little bit with a happy face. We've got paper bag two. Uh, the happy one with a really nice wide set smile there. Kind of toad-like almost. Um, next, we've got the uh, uh, the happy one. Sorry, the sad one. This is called happy uh, on the chat code, but it's actually a sad one. So we're crying here. We get the one teardrop. You know, like we're in jail because we've murdered someone or something. And then finally, the angry one, which almost looks kind of Halloween-y to me. And so, yeah, these cover our heads. And some devs implemented these however long ago. We're going to sell them. They got cold feet and didn't in the end, but the codes still work and the idea of randomly unlocking these skins is something very thrilling to me. If the devs aren't gonna like sell these because they think they're too ridiculous, they should at least do weird contests that give people a chance to unlock these. Like I'd be all for that. If they did like a Twitter contest or something or a sweepstake and it was like, you can get a code for this and it's very, very rare, this would be incredible. I don't know, I feel like there's a big part of me that just hates to see interesting things that are that are not being used and uh, so I wonder what you guys think about that one finishing up on the gem store there is a mini that was going to be sold and in fact was sold but you can't get now why is that in the second beta weekend event there was a gem store you guys might not remember this but you could already give arena net microtransaction cash at that point and the idea was you'd lose all the stuff you bought on the gem store during the beta and they would reimburse and credit your main account once the game actually came out I never played with a gem store in the beta, so I didn't really experience this, but they had a, a, a limited selection of things that you could buy. One of them, one of the sections was minis, and in the mini section did appear the mini snake. So yeah, there is no chat code for this guy, but uh, as you can see, there's a wiki page here, and he even had his own little icon. I, I always like with his unimplemented stuff, when they have dedicated icons too, you know, it makes it feel like they've put a lot more work in. But so there he is. Now as for snakes in game, now this is kind of fascinating. I don't know whether they were around in the betas and got removed, but as of the game today, they are extremely rare. In fact, there are no snakes in Guild Wars 2, except with Path of Fire, now this is amazing, in one area of the Desert Highlands and only here, like in the entire world, if you come to this spot of the Desert Highlands, maybe some others spawn around, there is a single snake. I mean, I don't know what dev did this. The, the dev that thought to do this is completely aligned with me in terms of, like, adding these cool, mysterious things. So, again, I, I feel like they must have been around in the betas a lot and, and ended up getting removed. Then with POF, someone implemented it. Uh, I don't know if this was just an accident or what, but yeah, one snake around. And I kind of wanted to... It's an ambient creature, so you can't really attack it or do anything with it because it will instantly die. Maybe you can see its death animation. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot any footage of that. But, uh, you know, you, you watch it long enough, you can see it slithering around. It's great, right? The way it moves. I would have loved that in a mini form. And for a while, we could have had it. Wonder how this guy would look scaled up to a massive boss size. 
I kind of like this, but I also wonder if it's a similar story to when they added mounts and they were going to do like a spider mount, but it kind of upset people, so they decided not to. Maybe the idea of everyone running around with snakes upset them or something, so they decided not to. Uh, moving on from items, though, I will give a special mention. Another item that came with Heart of Thorns that is totally not available, and I've always hated that it's not available as a guild enthusiast of the decoration system uh, and trying to get one of everything or ten of everything, is uh, the guild banner. So this was a launch Heart of Thorns guild decoration and it's just never been available no one knows how to get it no one's ever known how to get it it says it's crafted by scribes it probably doesn't even look that good because the heart of thorns initial set was not that good looking but i want it damn it and it's there on the ui and ah arena net put this in i'm guessing this might have had something to do with their early ideas for guild teams and guild integration into the pvp systems which kind of fell flat on their face even to this day I've done numerous conversations about that in the past. So yeah, this is not actually available and no one knows whether it ever will be. So finishing up the video, I have another really, really cool thing. And it's to do with the Guardian. And it's kind of in a weird way to do with one of the Guardian shouts. <clears throat> Hold the line. So this is just a shout, grant protection and regeneration to allies. When we press it, uh, we get a voice cue, which I actually have disabled. I think I have dialogue off at the moment because of some recording I was doing. Yeah, disable player, player chatter is off. But we, we get a dialogue line when we use a shout. Now, that should be natural and everyone should understand that. Here's a funny thing, though. This was bugged for a while at one point in time. And the lines that came out of it was not a char shouting, hold the line. It was a bunch of other random, really weird stuff. That didn't make much sense. Now, what it revealed was a bunch of unimplemented dialogue that was still kicking about in the files that ArenaNet made for 2012, presumably still has, but isn't in the game. So, what's the real story here? Well, you know how as we level up, we play a little bit of a comment uh, that we, our character might remark on it. When we unfog a new area of the map, our character might remark on it. There's another version of this that was region dependent and in fact part of that is already in game and that's with the dungeons So if you take a guardian in uh, sorry if you take a char or a silvari or a norn and not a char in particular I'll explain why in a second But if, if I take a norn into a dungeon and I beat the dungeon path as I accept that dungeon reward chest it will cause my character to say a line of dialogue. Now, these were never implemented into raids, and probably should have been. They were never implemented into fractals, and probably should have been. So here's a table of the various outcomes from the wiki. And you'll see for the Asura, it's couldn't have done it without me, or of course we made it, I knew the way through. That was both interesting and instructive. Now, what you'll notice here though, is it's incomplete. For some reason, the char lines aren't playing. There were no char lines, and same for the humans. So if you were either of those races, you never heard that stuff. And then for the Asura, they only got the male lines implemented, not the female lines. And for the Norn, there's a couple of missing male ones. Looks like they did a lot for Silvari, but Silvo Silvari always felt like they got, you know, the really fine tooth comb and careful treatment when it came to 2012 stuff. So yeah, all these lines could be there in those other formats, and that's a bit of a shame that there's a loss of that. But going back to hold the line, Hold the Line wasn't playing these voice lines, no, no. It was playing a whole other selection of voice lines. Same thing based on race and gender. So here on the wiki, we can see what was captured. Now, this may not be a comprehensive list because the bug was only there for a while, then it went away. But we were hearing, don't just stand there, dodge from the Asura, which presumably was going to play only in Kryta, or only when you triggered Hold the Line in Kryta, that came up. Uh, compared to me, most Asura have the intelligence of a carrot. You have been judged. Shield me from harm. Total power boosting in awe. These supplies should help to help us take over the world. And so on. Now, I'm not going to read all of them out. You guys can um, pause. Look at this. This one only played in the Urban Battlegrounds Fractal. Oh, I guess and the Shiver Big Mountains, which is weird. So there's so many of them. You'll notice that the char section once again is missing. But humans are filled in this time. Norn only have one, unfortunately, and again, this might just be because they weren't all caught, and Silvari have fewer. But you'll notice that a lot of these are actually world versus worldy as well. So I wonder whether the devs had an idea that based on world versus world event stuff, these were going to be triggering. None of them are actually playing in game now, guys. Look at this. None of them. I guess this would be an engineer exploring new areas. Maybe rocket boots go for the humans. And I think it's kind of crazy. But at least we do have a bit of a log with them on the wiki. 
Um, I, I guess maybe there's a chance these might be able to be mined out somehow and you can actually hear this audio. But Christ, mining audio is a nightmare, let me tell you. There's just so many files to look through. Maybe ArenaNet, uh, I still have these somewhere. Look at this, only coming from the, the Tower of Nightmares. Unbelievable. And unending nightmares. As you can see, it was all around Season 1. But yeah, just another crazy system. So this is just a little bit. There's actually loads of weird, cool trivia and old, unimplemented stuff that I'd love to talk about. So I'm going to watch how this video does. If it does well, uh, you know, if it gets you guys talking, if people are really enthusiastic about it, I would love to do more. Honestly, I've got several videos. We can look at all kinds of dead and underused, not implemented stuff. We can even talk a little bit about the philosophies behind them. Like, I kind of want to do a production on the extended experience as well one day for you all. Would you guys like that? So let me know, and um, hopefully I'll be back with more of these. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what your favorite thing was, and I will see you, hopefully, for the next part very soon in the Guild Wars 2 Graveyard.